What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing kind of a little checkup on the Subaru uh, since I haven't really made a video with it in a little while and recently I did an oil change and now I'm going to be replacing the radiator with a new CSF uh, OE radiator because the original one, I'll show you guys, is uh, starting to discolor and the end caps look like they're starting to leak a little bit. So before it kind of explodes and I get stuck on the side of the road, it's probably a good time to replace it. During the last oil change, I noticed that there was sort of this frothy, like yellow foam substance that was building up on the oil fill tube. And you can kind of see it there on those bottom threads down there. Uh, it's kind of like neon yellow looking stuff. So I started to get a little worried because, um, that's kind of like a sign of like oil and moisture or like oil and coolant building up. So I started to get worried. I started to go the whole head gasket route, started looking up parts, kind of figuring out what I needed to do to replace the head gasket because I've pretty much done everything else that could be leading up to that. So I went over to Alex's house and we did a little hydrocarbon test on the coolant system to see if there were any hydrocarbons from the oil building up in there uh, to kind of see if the head gasket was leaking. And that test came back negative and the system is pretty much clean of oil. So I kind of did some research, started looking up online if other people have had the same issue. And I guess what it is, is it's under short drives and not getting the oil temps hot enough. The moisture just continuously builds up in your oil system. And the way that it was designed, this oil fill tube happens to uh, chamber a lot of air. So moisture builds up there and it just creates that frothy substance. So I'm hoping that that is the primary cause for that and it's not some underlying issue that I can't find or diagnose. So for now, I'm just gonna leave that, but I did notice that there is a hose on my AOS that's kind of crimped, so I wanna fix that and then we'll get into switching out this radiator. And you can kinda of see back here, since I still have the factory top mount, these hoses are kind of all jumbled up, but there's one underneath this guy and it's kind of bent, there you go. So I'm going to relocate that specific hose. It's this one that has this heat shielding. I'm gonna actually bring it over these two so there's not as much weight down on that one. And uh, hopefully that kind of fixes that. All right, so that was really freaking hot to touch all those hoses, but we got that one fixed and now it's got uh, a lot less bend in it and, and it flows much better into that bottom hole. Uh, so that is all done. Now we can move on to swapping out the radiator. Now I really should have let the car sit a while before doing this because I know that coolant's gonna be burning hot. Um, so just a little note for you guys, if you're gonna be doing this, maybe let the car sit for a couple hours before you start to drain the boiling hot coolant. So, got the Subaru in the air. <clears throat> and now, oh, I gotta take this thing off. All right, much better. So now that I'm under here, uh, I'm gonna be taking this hose off, which is the lower radiator hose. Uh, taking that off and catching all the coolant into a bucket and waiting till this thing basically fully drains until I can go ahead and start disconnecting the radiator and taking that out. Ugh. All right. So, I know for a fact that the second I take this out, coolant is gonna go absolutely everywhere and all over me. So, it's gonna be sweet. Oh, it's just gonna go right in my face. Oh, please don't fuck. Oh God, excuse my language. Oh, I just, oh, this is like my least favorite part. Why don't they have like bleeder valves with this kind of thing? Just so you could like take a little bit out. Here we go. Ah, Wow, that wasn't so bad. Ow, I just have a feeling that this bucket's gonna fill up and I'm gonna be screwed. I just released the cap above, or above the radiator to kind of like gravity help push all that fluid out of the radiator. And uh, you can kind of see down there, it's just uh, casually building up. So since it's still draining down there, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on taking off some of the accessory lines 
that attach to the radiator. So I've loosened this clamp, slid it off, so once that's done draining, I can pull this one. There's these two coolant lines that run from this reservoir up here, go straight into the radiator. I disconnected those. Those are kind of just chilling over there, gathering, um, collecting any coolant that may drip out of those into a towel. And now I'm just kind of hanging out, waiting for that to get done. Uh, looking at the radiator and how it's going to come out, we've got these radiator stays. There's one on each side. I'm going to go ahead and take those out now. And then uh, once that's done, I'm going to pull this one and go ahead and pull the whole radiator assembly out. So I've got the radiator stays off the car. Uh, basically what it does is it just holds the radiator solid against the body. Once you take them off, it kind of wants to fall forward, which is actually a good thing because that's going to help that fluid drain out of that uh, opening at the bottom of the radiator. So I'll let that go, but what I like to do when I take anything off the car uh, is clean them off so they look nice and clean when I put them back. These are coated in dust, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these off so they look nice and shiny. Oh, way better than before. So now I can kind of show you the old radiator. So here are the two radiators side by side. This is gonna be the new CSF OE replacement radiator. Uh, and then we have the original one. So this is going to be the original one that has been on the car since it was brand new. It's got 156,000 miles on it, so it's quite a bit. Uh, going over it, we have our overflow tank here, just kind of sitting. It looks like it's got some gunk building up in the bottom. Uh, we got our fans. Those look to be in pretty good condition. Looking at the radiator from the back side, it looks to be all right. There's some, some fins that are bent. Just looks dirty overall. Oh, I forgot to mention when I was pulling this thing out, we've got one sensor here and another sensor here that you'll have to undo. Those are both for the fans. Um, looking at the top of the radiator, you can kind of see that there's been some coolant that's spilled over. I'm not sure if that's just from any time that the hose has been taken off or if that's maybe that it's starting to leak. Looking at the inside, it's really, really hard to see in there, but I'm starting to see some bubbling of the plastic cap on the inside, so it's kind of showing that it's starting to give out. I'm also seeing like the decay, as you guys can see here, of this plastic. It's starting to decay from being exposed to that coolant for so long. And the discoloration is really what hinted at uh, here and along the end cap, since these actually were supposed to be black, and now they are brown. Going to the front, you can really see the uh, discoloration there of how old this thing actually is. Um, a lot of fins bent. We got a lot of debris. Whoa! We've got a lot of debris building up along the bottom of the radiator and sort of towards the top since this is going to be the surface area that's exposed to the oncoming wind. Uh, it's obviously going to be dirty and bent and going to be filled with a bunch of bugs and whatnot. Going over to the replacement one, looking over everything, kind of comparing it, uh, everything looks to be the right like dimensions. But as you can see, dirty, super clean. And looking at the front side of it, pretty good quality. I only see a couple little tiny fins that, uh, there's like one here, one here. I think that's just from handling, but it's not really gonna do too much. A small little thing that I did notice in putting the radiator side by side is the fins on the aftermarket one. You can kind of see they stop um, a lot higher than the OEM one does. It's really hard to get in here and show you guys, but just take my word for it. These fins actually drop all the way to the bottom of those end caps, whereas these uh, do have a lot more of a gap along the bottom. I'm also noticing that at the top as well. You can see there's a, definitely a gap there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on moving all the accessories on this radiator over to the new one, and then I'll show you guys the finished product. Since this thing had a bunch of gunk on the bottom of it, I went ahead and put some dish soap in there and then some really hot water, and it cleaned it off pretty good. There's just a little bit like right there on that ledge, but if you look inside, like it's pretty much just stained. There's no like actual like buildup on the bottom like there was before. If you guys have uh, an overflow tank that's like super dirty, just rinse it out with dish soap and hot water. Starting to get a little dark out here, so I'm gonna have to kind of speed up the process of installing all this, but I have all the accessory stuff back on the new radiator. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in to the STI now and get everything hooked back up. So I went over everything to make sure that all the hoses and whatnot is all fully bolted up. So I've got the two up top here. I've got everything for the, the overflow tank and these top and lower radiator hoses all attached. This cap is on fully. 
Uh, some one thing I did notice is this aftermarket radiator doesn't have this like cushion here that the OEM one does. So it's got like a little shake to it. Uh, not very much. I think that's just because the uh, like stock radiator stays have a little bit larger of a gap in that rubber grommet. So maybe they make aftermarket ones that might fit a little bit better, but I don't think it's going to cause any problems or I'm even going to hear it at all. As far as the bottom of the car, these sensors are back in and on both sides and uh, the lower radiator hose is connected. So that is pretty much it for the installation goes for the radiator. So now it's time to fill it up with all the coolant that I lost. I lost about like, I would say a container and a half of coolant. Uh, luckily I do have two of them and we did save a little bit from draining. So I will show you guys the process of uh, refilling all the coolant system. So to start, uh, I just use Subaru OEM coolant. I think it's just the safest route to go. Uh, this is the pre-diluted 50-50 mix. And you're gonna, going to wanna get a funnel. And basically you fill from here with the car running and the heat fully on. And it's basically going to start flowing the coolant throughout the entire system until I'm sure that there's no leaks and the operating temperature that the coolant likes to sit at, which I believe is like 190 to 200, it's a little bit hot, but that way you know that pressure is high enough in the system and that everything is fully circulated. So now I'm kind of just letting the car idle, get that coolant temperature up. Every so often I'm filling this funnel up once the coolant starts to drain down into that expansion tank. Um, and once I know that the coolant has reached a high enough temperature for the fans to kick on, which is like, I believe 205 degrees, then I know that pretty much the coolant has cycled enough and it's hot enough to have completely filled the system. And then from there, I can go ahead and take the car on a quick little test drive just to make sure everything is running smoothly and we don't have any leaks. As you can see here, the coolant is starting to go down and every so often you'll see it start to burp, which means that uh, it's doing its job and it's basically getting all the air out of the system. So after letting the car completely bleed the coolant system and get all those bubbles out, we took it for a test ride for about like 30 minutes or so and everything seemed to be fine. It wasn't leaking and the coolant temps were staying where they should be. I didn't notice any um, rattling coming from that, that radiator like I thought there, there possibly could be because that like, uh, like padding isn't there on this aftermarket one. But everything was totally fine. Uh, super stoked with how this aftermarket CSF radiator worked. Um, as I was kind of installing it, I noticed there were these two like attachments that you could have on there for a transmission cooler. I looked up on the website and that's like an optional thing that you can hook up. Uh, I chose not to, I just plugged them off um, because I won't be using them. But overall, I'm very happy with the install. I'm very happy with the quality of the CSF radiator. As you guys saw, it's, it's pretty good quality compared to the OEM one. But I think that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.